at WBCBSports.com and our Facebook page. Your home for high school sports is right here at WBCB 1490. Welcome to Bruce S. Martz Field here on the campus of Ewing High School, and we've got a good one for you today on the WBCB Sports Network between the Hopewell Valley Bulldogs and the Ewing Blue Devils, and this game is brought to you by the Capital Health System, the Mercer County Prosecutor's Office, Haldeman Ford Subaru, the New Jersey Education Association, Team Toyota, the Revere Restaurant, 12th Man Touchdown Club, the Trentonian, the Italian People's Bakery, and Hyundai of Trenton. Welcome to Ewing High School, everybody. Jordan Hirsch alongside Gus the Bus Barber for this WJFL Capital Division matchup between the 1-0 Hopewell Valley Bulldogs and 1-1 Ewing Blue Devils. How you doing today, Gus? I am doing great, Jordan. How you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. It's good to be back with you. It is good to be back with you, too, Gus. Well, Let's get let's dig into this matchup a little bit because this let's start with Hopewell Valley first because this is an explosive offense coming off a 10 and 1 season last year that saw them go all the way to the group 3 finals and they're going to be led by quarterback Milan Desai who had a heck of a game against Lawrence in their 41 to 6 win last week 11 for 15 207 yards and he's going to be looking to replicate that here today. Yeah, Hopewell Valley, a very, very experienced team coming in off of that very successful season. Like you said, last year, being able to call, being able to be a part of one of their playoff games against the Notre Dame Irish and really just taking care of that Irish team last year. So it should be a very, very exciting season for this Hopewell Valley team going ahead. But Ewing just trying to keep going forward and get as many wins as possible, one-on-one -on, -one on the season, just trying to keep grinding and keep getting better every day and day. And day in and day out. Yeah, and something that makes this Hopewell Valley offense so electric is their run game, their power run game. They've got an, an amazing offensive line led by two first conference players, and they're going to look to really pound the ball on the ground here today. For Ewing, it's going to be a tough test to stop them. Their defense has been good this year. Only They've only allowed 30, or uh, I should say they've only allowed 29 points all season, but they've got a real tough test today, Gus. How, how, do you, how do you expect them to attack this Hopewell Valley offense? Yeah, I think it all starts with the pressure. You gotta try to get pressure on this quarterback and try to, just try to make him uncomfortable. If you can try to make him uncomfortable, it'll make the offense a lot harder of a game plan going forward. But I think it all starts with the pressure up front with that defensive lineman and those linebackers. Well, Ewing's offense, this is an offense that really likes to run the ball. They had a tough time against Steinert last week, lost 17-0. They were kind of forced to throw it a little too much than they, than they would like. So for Ewing, they're going to look to chew up some clock. They're going to look to really pound the ball on the ground as well. And if they could do that, they're going to have a real successful game today. Yeah, it should be, it should be a very fun one early in the season. I know a lot of these teams are just trying to get going and underway, but this should be a fun one here, a beautiful Ewing high. Man, Jordan, I am excited. Hopefully it can cool down a little bit, though. It's a little humid. Mm -hmm, a little humid for September, but at least we've got some cloud cover and the rain looks like it's going to hold off today. Let's talk a little bit now about Ewing's defense because they're running a new defensive scheme, and all things considered, they've really played well through their first two games. Uh, talking with head coach Ross Madelon, he, he said that it sometimes takes them a drive or two to get going, which could cost them today against Hopewell Valley's this electric offense. But once they get that defense in rhythm, it's been really good this season. What should we expect to see from them today, Gus? Yeah, and like, like I brought up a little bit, I think it really comes with the pressure today. I think you're going to see a lot of these front seven for Ewing trying to get a lot of pressure on this Hopewell Valley offense. And if they can get that, make this Hopewell Valley offense a little uncomfortable, Ewing's going to have a good shot of trying to win this game today. Well, these are two teams that have pl that have played some really good matchups over the years, including a 21-13 Hopewell Valley win last season. It was one of their closer games that they played last year. And so, all right, both teams are getting set to take the field. We've got a good one for you today, and we will be right back with kickoff here on the WBCB Sports Network. Free, and I hope you're enjoying today's game. I'd like to commend today's students for participating in today's event. Being a part of extracurricular activities, whether it's an athletic event, marching in the band, 
or performing in the school play or being on the debate team is good for today's youth. And parents, stay involved in your children's activities and encourage them. An involved parent nurtures your children to accomplish great things. I'm proud to support the youth of Mercer County. This is Angelo Honor for your Mercer County Prosecutor, and I hope you enjoyed today's game. New Jersey is home to the best public schools in the nation, and that didn't happen by accident. It's the result of parents, educators, and communities working together year after year to give our students a world-class education, no matter the challenge. Because parents and educators know that with a shared commitment to our public schools, our children can learn, grow, and thrive. And together, we can keep New Jersey's public schools the best in the nation. Capital Health's primary care network continues to grow, bringing its extensive option of locations to your neighborhood. Whether you're scheduling a wellness checkup or not feeling well, advanced medicine starts with a Capital Health primary care doctor at locations near you in Mercer, Bucks, and Burlington counties. To find a Capital Health primary care location that's convenient for you, visit capitalmedicalgroup.org. That's capitalmedicalgroup.org. There really is nothing like a home team advantage. That's why Team Toyota is the choice for your next vehicle purchase or service this season. With new Toyota models available for immediate delivery and over 100 certified used and pre-owned vehicles for any budget. Plus service specials to keep you on the road to victory. Shop or schedule online at teamtoyota.net or choose one of our three locations in Langhorne, Glen Mills, or Princeton. Are you part of the team? Hi, Merrill Reese reminding you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly or New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs, plus catering. For reservations, call 609-882-6365 at 609-882-6365. Come home to traditional Italian cuisine, the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. This is Merrill Reese reminding you that Haldeman Ford Subaru on Route 33 in Hamilton Township is more than just a great place to purchase a new Ford Subaru or pre-owned car or truck. Their collision and service centers services all makes and models and specializes in fleet service. Haldeman's Collision Center is renowned for their work. It's a state-of-the-art facility. All insurance accepted, free estimates and loaner cars available, and one of the friendliest staffs around. From small dents to major repairs on any maker model, Model. It's Haldeman Ford Subaru Collision Center, Route 33 in Hamilton Township. They're good! Hi, this is Mercer County Prosecutor Angelo Onerfree, and I hope you're enjoying today's game. I'd like to commend today's students for participating in today's event. Being a part of extracurricular activities, whether it's an athletic event, marching in the band, or performing in the school play, or being on the debate team, is good for today's youth. And parents, Stay involved in your children's activities and encourage them. An involved parent nurtures your children to accomplish great things. I'm proud to support the youth of Mercer County. This is Angelo Honor for your Mercer County Prosecutor, and I hope you enjoyed today's game. New Jersey is home to the best public schools in the nation, and that didn't happen by accident. It's the result of parents, educators, and communities working together year after year to give our students a world-class education, no matter the challenge. Because parents and educators know that with a shared commitment to our public schools, our children can learn, grow, and thrive. And together, we can keep New Jersey's public schools the best in the nation. Capital Health's primary care network continues to grow bringing its extensive option of locations to your neighborhood. Whether you're scheduling a wellness checkup or not feeling well, Advanced Medicine starts with a Capital Health primary care doctor at locations near you in Mercer, Bucks, and Burlington counties. To find a Capital Health primary care location that's convenient for you, visit capitalmedicalgroup.org. That's capitalmedicalgroup.org. 
High school, the team's captains are out, getting set for the coin toss. Ewing in all blue, Hopewell Valley in white tops, black pants, black helmets. As we await the coin toss, see who will be getting the ball first. If it is Ewing, we're going to see quarterback Ryan Gregg, who's coming off of an 11 for 19 game, 89 yards in the loss to Steiner last week. It was just really all around tough for their offense to get anything going. And Ewing wins the toss. They have deferred to the second half, so it will be Hopewell Valley and Milan decide to get the ball first, says Hopewell Valley. This will be just their second game of the season. They sit in second place behind Notre Dame in the West Jersey Football League Capital Division. Ewing right behind them at one and one. You ready for are you ready for some football, Gus? I am ready, Jordan. Great, great teaser for what a great weekend of football it's going to be. You know, Eagles tip off tomorrow, so I'm excited. I'm very excited. It's that time of year again, although it doesn't feel like that time of year with the humidity. Mid 80s here early in the morning, well, I guess later in the morning now, but still early in the day, Gus, for it to be this high. Oh, it is dis. Disgusting out right now. Sweating my shirt off, pretty much. Well, we are almost set here for football at Bruce S. Martz Field. As Ewing is taking the field now, set getting ready for the kickoff. The kicker will be number 11, Jose Ovale Ayala. And here comes Hopewell Valley. This was a Hopewell Valley team that put up 41 points in just the first half. They were able to rest their starters for the second half last week against Lawrence. It was a 41-6 win. And you know they're going to be looking to replicate that here today. Hopewell team that went for almost 400 total yards in that game. We talked about this electric offense during the pre or during the pregame show, and now we're going to get a chance to see them on the field first. Whistle blows, and o Jose Ovale Ayala getting set for the kickoff from the 40-yard line, and here we go. We are underway. It's a short one, and it's bobbled and then goes out of bounds along the opposite 40, and that is where Milan Desai and the and the Hopewell Valley offense will start their first drive of the game. Milan Desai sat behind Tim McCune last season. Tim McCune, who broke nearly every passing record at Hopewell Valley last season. Almost 2,000 yards through the air, and Milan Desai certainly learned from one of the best. He was the Mercer County Player of the Year last year in his senior season. Hopewell Valley will start from their own 40. And the first play from scrimmage is a handoff to the running back, Ben DeCore. He's got some running room, puts his shoulder down, and is able to pick up a first out across midfield. Cordell Sloan in on the tackle. Sloan, who does a lot for this Ewing team, we'll see him at wide receiver, we'll see him at defensive back, and we'll also see him returning kickoffs and punts today as well. Can do it all. Again, another handoff here to DeCore, running to his left, and he's able to have another big gain here. They'll call it about nine out to the 40-yard line. It brings up second down and one. So far, two plays and two good runs here for the Bulldogs offense, and that's what we were talking about, Gus. That's what they. That's what this team is built around. That's where they're, they're going to try to get that running game going here early. Yeah, and if once you get the running game going, it's really going to complement the passing game once you get start start doing that. Second and one, they give it to Decor again. Bounces off the line of scrimmage. Now running to his left down the sideline, and he's got a first down and a whole lot more out across the 30 down to around the 25, maybe the 26 yard line. So officially mark it at the 25. So already 35 yards on the ground on just three plays for this Hopewell Valley offense. 
We've yet to see Desai throw the ball, and he's got an arm on him. Got to believe we're going to see it here pretty soon. Again, it's Ben Decor in the backfield along with Milan Desai. They're going to give it to him again. This time he'll try to run to his right. Gets through one wave of defenders and is able to carry it out to around the 15. They place it at the 16. It looks like it's going to bring up second down and one. Yeah, great job so far by this Hopewell Valley offense. Just getting the ground game going and really showing their physicality. Yeah, offensive line certainly winning the battle of the trenches so far here on the first drive. This is a Hopewell Valley team that you mentioned how experienced they are. They also graduated 22 seniors last year, and they've just got players that can replace them right away. We're going to see Desai throw the ball here for the first time. That pass is intercepted by Sam Simpkins, and he's tackled out around the 20. So the first pass attempt by Milan Desai is an interception, and, that, and the Ewing Blue Devils will take over. Nice play there by the Ewing Blue Devils. Seeing that Hopewell Valley was going to eventually pass that ball and recognizing it very quickly. The ball will be placed on the 23, so that's where Ryan Gregg and the Ewing offense will come out. So not the way Milan Desai wanted to start. And after a drive that was five plays all on the ground with all pretty big gains, uh, Coach, uh, Coach Dave Caldwell decides to go to the air and it backfires, Desai throws his first interception of the season. This handoff is bobbled, but able to stick with it there. Was, was the running back look like that was uh, Devon Law? And he was able to fall on it right around the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up second and 10. Greg in the shotgun. It's going to be another handoff. They run it up the middle this time. And falling forward out to about the 30-yard line is Law. And that'll make it third down and five. Yeah, a little bit more manageable here, though, on this third down to go. They place it at the 29, so actually third and four. 3.15 into this game, and so far Ewing has come up with an interception and now looking to pick up their first first down here. Third and four, Greg waiting for the snap. They put a man in motion, hand it off to Law, and he is met behind the line of scrimmage by a swarm of Bulldogs. So Hopewell Valley's first defensive drive, they're going to force a three and out and get the ball right back. Yeah, great job by this Bulldogs defense to pick up their offense after a crucial turnover here. Well, Jose Ovel Ayala and the punting unit out there here for Ewing. So not the way they wanted to start this uh, offense, their offensive game after getting the interception. Waiting for it back around the 48-yard line is the deep man, Luke Caldwell. Ovale Ayala's punt is away, nearly blocked. It's wobbly. It drops at the 48 and takes a Bulldogs bounce. It'll be picked up at the 46 of Ball Ewing. And so Milan Desai and Hopewell Valley's second Ball drive will start Ball in plus territory. It's time for your first Ewing High School sports yeah, time. not the greatest punt there by the Blue Devils, but Hopewell Valley getting in good field Boy, position, right. trying to get the first points on the board. Yeah, couldn't tell if maybe that ball was tipped a little bit. There was definitely some pressure. And TD Club is proud to recognize those players who've had a significant impact on their, on their team's performance through the first half of the season. TD Club will pay for two players per school. As Milan to sign the offense back out there, it's a handoff here to Ben Decor and he's able to fall forward out to the 41 yard line. It's a gain of five. Yeah, this Bulldogs offense loving to go play action here. Trying to get the Blue Devils defense a little, little off guard. So second down and five. Again, it's 
Ben DeCour, who's been the feature back for Hopewell Valley so far in this game. We'll also see Dylan Yasher at some point, I would assume. It's another handoff to DeCour, running to his right. He's got a first down as he falls out to around the 30. Number five on the carry. Tackle by number 13. So far, a really good game by Ben DeCour, who's been used on all the offensive plays so far, far for the Bulldogs, except for the interception. Yeah, anytime he's getting the ball, it seems like he's getting at least five yards or more. Yeah, Bulldogs working quickly here. First and 10 from the 30. Again, it's DeCour along with the side in the backfield. They're going to give it to him running to his left, and he's able to get around, around one defender and take it down the left sideline out near the first down marker. He was able to elude Joshua Baker there and pick up a gain of about nine. It's going to make it second down and short, second and one. Yeah, good job to get that corner and get around it. So this is about where Hopewell Valley threw that interception on their last drive. Dylan Yasher is in the game now. He's to the left of Desai. First time we've seen him today. On second and one, that's who they give it to, and he's met um, well behind the line there by Chaz Heading. It's going to be a loss of about two. It's going to make it third and three. How about Chaz Heading there breaking through the U or the uh, Hopewell Valley offensive line? And three. Chaz Heading also on the lacrosse team here at Ewing High School, 6'1", 280. Big boy. Yeah, two total tackles in the game against uh, Steiner last week. And that's the first time we've seen him today. Third and three. Desai hands this one off to Yasher, who's brought down well behind the first down marker as Cordell Sloan was able to get in there on that tackle. And now we'll see. If Dave Caldwell, the head coach for Hopewell Valley, decides to leave the offense out there, looks like that's what he's going to do. Yeah, well, it, when you're in this such a good and field forward. position, it makes sense to go for it in fourth down. Yeah, this would be a 40-ish yard field goal try from here, so maybe figuring that's a little too deep. And instead we will opt to go for it. It's fourth down and four. And you got to believe we're going to see Desai maybe look to throw this one here, try to avenge his interception. That's what he'll do, Desai looking to throw to the right side, and that's nearly oh. picked off there by Brian Carter Jr., but it falls incomplete, and it's going to be a turnover on downs. So, so far, Ewing's defense is kind of bent but has not broken, and they'll get the ball right back. Yeah, perfect, perfect example right there of bend but don't break. Offensive Hopewell keeping the ball on the ground and keep getting five yard after five yard after five yard. Well, when it's time to make a stop, this Blue Devils defense showed that they can make a stop. Got one last drive and they got one this drive. Great job by this Blue Devils defense. I've been impressed. And guess what, Gus? Don't forget, if you miss any of today's action, I know you won't because you're here with me, but anyone else, you can read all about it in tomorrow's edition of The Trentonian for your complete local and national news seven days a week. It's The Trentonian or online at trentonian.com, the only newspaper serving Bucks, Burlington, and Mercer County seven days a week. It's The Trentonian. First pass of this drive by Greg falls incomplete, looking for Sam Simpkins, and will make it second down and ten. Ewing's offense, they've only been able to put up 28 points this season. Those all came in their week zero win over South Hunter, and it was a 28 to 12 win. Of course, getting shut out last week against Steiner. Second down and 10. Greg takes a snap, gonna look to throw, goes over the middle, and that pass is incomplete. Oh. Intended for Amir Latimer, a pass just a little bit too high. Yeah, good coverage there by the Bulldogs, noticing it was a pass and not letting any of those receivers get free, and great job there. Yeah, Latimer. Almost a, almost a beautiful throw, though. Yeah, try to dump that one in the bucket. Latim Latimer had a little bit of positioning, but the throw just sailed over his head. And so it's third down and 10 now. Third down and 10. I'll tell you what, Jordan. We must have honey on us or something, because there's bees left and right on us. There are bees galore, so we're going to try to not get stung here today. Yeah, you hear one Hide of your just, sugary drinks. If you hear one of us scream real quick, it's because we just got stung. 
Third down and 10, Greg takes a snap, rolling to his right, looking for a receiver, still running, running out of time, fires it over the middle, and that's tipped and incomplete. Looked like that pass was intended for Nijay Manning. I don't know, Gus, it looked like he had another receiver kind of behind Manning, and if you didn't get his hands on that ball, it might have fallen right into, his, right into his hands. Yeah, and it could have been a first down and a big gain, but you know, Manning got a hand on it, tipped the ball, and just falls incomplete. Uh, Another, what came off a great defensive stop by the Ewing Blue Devils, a just an uh, offensive drive that just stalls for these Blue Devils. Yeah, back-to-back -back three and outs to start the game for them, and Ovel Ayala out there to punt again. Back deep to receiver on the 50-yard line is Luke Caldwell. He was a first-team all-conference defensive back for Ewing, or for uh, Hopewell Valley, excuse me, last season. This is a very low snap. It rolls. Ovel Ayala able to get the punt away. It bounces at the 47, takes a Blue Devils roll down to the opposite 47. And so Hopewell Valley will start in their own territory for this drive. Yeah, not as great of a punt, but at least a better punt than the last one they had, Jordan. Yeah, and it took a good roll there. So Milan Desai in this Hopewell offense, they've been able to use the running game to their advantage a lot, but when they've gotten into those passing downs, uh, 0 for 2 so far is Desai with an interception. So got to believe we're going to see a lot more of the running game here this drive. Yeah, it's just been so successful for this Hopewell Valley offense. First just 10. doesn't make sense to get away from it. It's Ben DeCour along with Milan Desai in the backfield for the first play of this drive. Desai flips it to DeCour, going to his left, turns it upfield. He's got a first down as he's forced out of bounds out across midfield Number at the 39-yard line of Ewing. And so real quick, one play and already into plus territory are the Bulldogs. Just doing a fantastic job on this offensive ground game. Yeah, Ben DeCour really having a nice first quarter so far. He had f just four rushes for 63 yards, but a couple of touchdowns in their win over Lawrence last week. And he's got a lot more than four carries so far. He's definitely being used as the feature guy so far in this one. He's out there again. On this first down play, they'll give it to him, running to his left. Not a lot of room. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. And it's going to bring up second and 10. Ben DeCour on the lacrosse team at Hopewell Valley High School. So there are a good amount of two-sport and three-sport athletes even on this Bulldogs team. That's always good to see kids, these kids being involved in as many sports as possible. Is it lacrosse a sport, though? I think it counts. Uh, I'm a baseball I was guy. A bowl, I was I'm a, a baseball school, guy, so I don't like lacrosse. And I was a bowler in high school, so if that counts, then lacrosse counts. Yeah, good point. Second and 10, Desai hands this one off this time to Dylan Yasher, who runs up the middle and takes it out near the first down marker. And it's going to be close to see if they give it to him, and they will. The referees say move the chains, and it brings up for a first down at the 27. Moving quickly is Hopewell. This time they hand it off. Running to the right is Yasher again, and he's able to carry it forward into the red zone now for another first down. Yeah, going kind of quick here to get this Blue Devils defense and not let them get any subs or get any breath here. So first and 10, Yasher again in the backfield, and they'll give it to him again, running up the middle. He falls forward for a gain of maybe three or four. It's going to make it second down and medium here as Hopewell continues to move the ball effectively on the ground. Still no score here at Ewing High School as we've hit the three-minute mark left to go in the first. They'll put a man in motion and give it to him. That's Owen Langle running to his right. Turns it upfield and cuts it on in for a touchdown. Hopewell Valley on the board first. Yeah, and you saw the success with this Bulldogs offense has been the ground game so far, so didn't even try to attempt to pass here on that drive. Just kept going with the successful offensive game plan, and they got six. 
First time we've seen Owen Langle today. Usually we see him in the passing game. Had three receptions for 83 yards last week, and his first touch comes on a jet sweep, and it's a touchdown, and now he's on for the extra point. Lengel went five for six last week against Lawrence, and we've got whistles before the snap. The referee's kind of in discussion over what the whistle was for. I think they're going to ask what, they're, uh, what they want for lunch. What do you want for lunch, Gus? <sighs> I'm hungry. I don't know. Are Chicken you tenders. Head down to the snack bar at halftime, maybe? I'm thinking about it, honestly. We got any, uh, we got any food reads? We could hit that place up. That's true. That's true. We do have one, and it's going to come up right after this Owen Langle extra point. It's a low snap, and the kick is up, and it is good. So 7 nothing, Hopewell Valley, and now time to make Gus even more hungry because the Italian People's Bakery is, brou is proud to support high school sports on the WBCB Sports Network. Visit them at their signature location at 63 Butler Street for the finest rolls, deli meats, and pastries. Drive by to smell that homemade bread made daily or have them cater your next party or affair. The Italian People's Bakery located on 63 Butler Street is the place to go for the best hoagies on Sunday afternoon and the finest dessert trays for your special get-together. Visit them once again at 63 Butler Street in Chambersburg, the Italian People's Bakery since 1936. Gus, I'm sure that did not help uh, your it hunger. It did not. I am getting, I can hear my stomach growling right now because of that Italian people's bakery. Ah, oh, always fantastic. You're going to head over and buy us all hoagies after this game? Absolutely not. Wow. <laughs> Come on, Gus. We're, we're, we're all hungry, you know. Yeah, that, you probably got more money than I do in my bank. It, it was an early <laughs> It was an early morning. It was an early morning. It was it was earlier than it was supposed to. Yeah, this game was supposed to start at noon, starting at 11 a.m. because of the possibility of some rain and thunderstorms coming in later in the day. So I kind of like it, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with the 11 a.m. Like start. The, I like the early A little football. breakfast and football. Oh, nothing better than brunch and football. Pancakes and pigskin, if you like, will. Feels like we're on the West Coast right now. Langle's kickoff is a short one. It's going to go out. Out to the 40 and be fallen on there by Chris Jones. And so Ryan Gregg will get his best starting field position of the day so far. Trailing 7 nothing now. Ewing still looking for their first first down pickup of this game. And they're going to start at the 40 yard, their own 40 yard line. Maybe right in between the 40 and the 39 if we're going to be exact. Yeah, and this is definitely going to be a crucial drive for this Ewing offense. Their first couple drives really haven't been able to find their, their rhythm offensively, even though their defense has looked fantastic. So it's going to be an interesting, interesting drive. And we've got a false lot start. of movement here. This is going to be, I think, I think going against start. Ewing. Yeah. yeah. Although there, were, there was movement on both sides of the line. And yeah, Ewing's backing up. Yep, it's going to be the first, their first penalty of the game, and it's going to make it first down and 15 from the 35. And those are those unnecessary penalties that could hurt uh, a whole game plan. Yeah, it's something that teams cannot do when facing this high-powered Hopewell Valley team is, you know, commit silly mistakes like that. The penalties certainly do not help. So first down and 15 now. Still the best starting field position they've had. Gray going to keep it on the RPO, and he's wrapped up well behind the line. Back at about the 31, they're going to say he was brought down by three Hopewell players, and it's going to make it second down and 19. Second and 19. For the first time we see Coach Madelon deploy the RPO. It does not go well. And now you're kind of in a passing down here for Ryan Gregg, who is 0 for 2 so far. Yeah, big play call here. Second and very long. Second and 19. They'll put a man in motion and hand it off up the middle there. And Devon Law is brought down maybe right at about the line to, or line of scrimmage. 
And now it's going to be third and forever. They will give him a yard. It'll make it third down and 18. And now we'll see if Ewing decides to try to heave it and pick up this first down or just try to play it safe and maybe give their punter a little bit more, little bit more room to kick it. Third and 18, Greg going to look to throw, running to his right, fires it, and it is caught out there by Nijay Manning. He's brought down at the 41. Not enough for the first down. It's going to bring up fourth and nine. Yeah, but a much more manageable fourth down here, possibly maybe going to go for it, but I don't, bring a fourth down. don't I mean, think that is going to be the choice, though. Yeah, it looks like the punting unit is coming back out, but it's the first completion of the day there for Ryan Gregg. Ball's placed on the 42-yard line. And back deep to receive this punt again is Luke Caldwell. He's yet to receive either of the first two punts that have come his way. Oveil Ayala, the punter, senior. He's been on the varsity team since his freshman year. And before his punt here, we've got a flag. I think it's going to be a neutral zone infraction. Yeah, and if it is, that is what they call it. It's going to make it fourth down and three. Capital Health's primary care network continues to grow, bringing its extensive the punting unit out there. Yeah, just try to put Hopewell Valley in terrible field position here. As the clock winds down to just 10 seconds to play here in the first quarter. It looks like they're just waiting for this time to run out to get the end of the first here. Yeah, two seconds and one. That's going to end the first quarter. So 7 nothing. Hopewell Valley leads the I'm Ewing Blue Devils seven. here Good after board. one. Seven. We've got three quarters to go, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on the WBCB Sports Network. Option of locations to your neighborhood. Whether you're scheduling a wellness checkup or not feeling well, advanced medicine starts with a Capital Health primary care doctor at locations near you in Mercer, Bucks, and Burlington counties. To find a Capital Health primary care location that's convenient for you, visit capitalmedicalgroup.org. That's capitalmedicalgroup.org. There really is nothing like a home team advantage. That's why Team Toyota is the choice for your next vehicle purchase or service this season with new Toyota models available for immediate delivery and over 100 certified used and pre-owned vehicles for any budget, plus service specials to keep you on the road to victory. Shop or schedule online at teamtoyota.net or choose one of our three locations in Langhorne, Glen Mills, or Princeton. Are you part of the team? Well, Valley Bulldogs, seven to nothing. While we were away, Gus almost caught a t-shirt. If only I kept my head up, I would have got one. Landed right next to me. You never know when they're going to come flying out of the t-shirt cannons. T-shirt robot. So now it looks like it's fourth and three, and they're going to go for it from the 47. They had, Ewing had their punting unit out before the first quarter, and now they're going to call timeout. Looks like maybe they were just trying to... Draw them off yeah, sides, trying to possibly. get them to jump off sides, and now Coach Madelon will send the punting unit back out there. Well, they had that chance to draw them off sides before the end of the first quarter, and now they bring the offense out there and try to get them to jump off sides, but Hopewell Valley doesn't bite. The Snack Shack is selling some great concessions. Be sure to stop by, grab chips, candy, a hot dog, pretzel, cookies, Chick-fil-A sandwiches. And just in case you're wondering, who has the car inventory in Mercer and Bucks counties? Well, it's the all-new Hyundai of Trenton. They have cars priced from $2,000 to $200,000 and everything in between all the new Hyundai models, models pre-owned cars and SUVs from BMW, Audi, Cadillac, Ford, Chevy, and other models. Hyundai of Trenton has the inventory ready for immediate delivery. Hyundai of Trenton, the area's newest auto dealer, has the cars in stock at 1655 North Olden Avenue in Ewing Township. So, fourth down and three. 
And they are going to bring the punting unit out there officially. It'll be three drives and three punts now for Ewing. Still yet to pick up a first down. And back deep to receive again is Luke Caldwell at the 25. Avail Ayala takes a snap, punts it away. It's a good one. Well over Caldwell's head, bounces at the 15 and rolls down to the eight-yard line. And it's a real difficult starting field position now for Hopewell Valley. Yeah, and after two not-so-great punts, that one was a fantastic punt, getting them almost within the 10. I think it actually is inside the 10. Yep. Yeah, and so the first quarter here for Hopewell Valley saw a heavy dose of the run game, and got to believe that's what we're going to see here to start the second. It was mostly Ben DeCour, the junior running back for Hopewell Valley, who ran for 81 yards there in the in the first quarter. Their lone touchdown came on a jet sweep run by Owen Lengel, who then added the extra points. So that's where we stand right now, 7 nothing as Milan Desai and the Hopewell Valley offense back out there in the shadow of their own end zone. They've got the ball on the seven yard line. The side takes the snap, gonna give it to Decor, going to his right, has a lot of running room here, turns it upfield. He's out across the 30, still going, and he's finally brought down around the 40 yard line by Joshua Baker. But a great start to the second quarter for this Hopewell Valley offense. Just an absolute fantastic run. Has had, has had great run after great run today, and that one just the best one of them yet. Yeah, that one goes for 33 yards out to the 40. And so right quick, Hopewell Valley able to get out of that poor starting field position. They're going to give it to DeCour again, and this time not as big of a gain, only two or three yards. Tripped up by number 13. That'll make it second down and seven, they'll call it. So a gain of three. Second down and seven. Sam Simpkins was in on that tackle. He's been busy on the defensive side of the ball. Had two and a half tackles last week against Steinert, and he's had a good first half so far. Second down play, Desai hands it off and wrapped up well behind the line is Ben DeCour. Amir Benning was in on that tackle. It's going to bring up a third down and 12. They'll call it a loss of five all the way back to the 38. Yeah, and if you want to you wanna stop the run game, you got to pressure him in the backfield, and that's exactly what this Blue Devils defense did there. Yeah, now this will be the longest third down try for Hopewell Valley so far in the game. They haven't been great on third downs, and Milan Desai, who had a really good game against Lawrence last week, has kind of been a part of that, has thrown an interception and also a ball that maybe should have been picked but was knocked down on a fourth down play. Desai here going to look to throw again. Third and 12 being chased to his right, and he's going to throw it out of bounds. A flag comes in late. Uh. And so for now it's fourth down, but we'll check the flag. This would just be a crushing penalty if it goes against Ewing as they look like they had the Bulldogs stop there. Referees in discussion. And it is a personal foul call against Ewing. So after the big run by Ben DeCour on the first series, Ewing was able to force a a third and 12, but commit a big penalty, which is going to bring the ball out to the 50-yard line and set the Bulldogs up with a first down. So they catch a break. Desai going to hand it off to DeCour again, and he's ridden out of bounds out around the 47-yard line. Josh Mizek. And I will see Gus if that penalty there by Ewing comes back to bite them. They had a chance to get off the field and get their offense back out there, only trailing by seven. Yeah, it looked like a penalty that didn't necessarily was 100% a penalty. It was a very question, controversial call and one that could come bite, 
come back and bite Ewing in the butt. Ewing stacks the box here. Desai going to look to throw it here on second down. Ducks under some of the defenders, takes off himself, and is able to run forward for a first down out to the 35-yard line. So Milan Desai using his legs there. He was able to rush for two touchdowns in, the game, in their game against Lawrence last week. And the first time he's had to take off and run the ball here, it's a first down pickup. Desai on first and 10, going to hand it off to Decor, going to his right, looking to get the edge, is able to, and is, pick, and is able to get out to around the first down marker. They're going to give him the first down as he's forced out of bounds at the 22. Is this Hopewell offensive line just continues to open up a ton of holes for their running game, and Ben Decor has found them and has really been able to have a good first half so far. So first down and 10 stands. from the 22. Be on the lookout as they're walking around if you want to score big today. This time it's Yasher in the backfield. That's who they give it to. Cuts it up field and is able to take it out to about the 16 before being tackled by a handful of Ewing players. It's going to make it second down and medium. So Hopewell again have found found themselves in the red zone. Second down and four. They'll hand it off again, running up the middle and put lowering his shoulder and taking it for a third down and one now was Dylan Yasher, and it's gonna be third and short. It's third down. The sun peeking its way through the clouds now is a very foggy, humid morning. Still humid, Gus, but now we've got some sunshine over top. Nice little sunshine. It's become a beautiful day here at Ewing High School. Just turn the humidity down a little bit, and it would be perfect. Oh, you're telling me. On third down, they give it to Asher, running up the middle. He's got the first down as he takes it inside the 10 to the 7. Tackle by number one, Jaheim Crosby. Yeah, this has been like a, a four-minute drive so far for Hopewell, getting the ball once the quarter started and only eight minutes First left. From the seven. Yeah, and this obviously goes back to that big penalty on the third and 12 play. A personal foul call against Ewing that gave Hopewell a first down instead of making it fourth and 12 and forcing them to punt. And now the Bulldogs find themselves in a first and goal scenario, leading by seven, and before this first play, Coach, Ma Coach Madelon will use his first time out of the half. Maybe just trying to get the correct personnel. And so while we have a minute, I'd like to remind you that the TD Club is proud to recognize those players who have had a significant impact on their team's performance through the first half of the season. The TD Club will pay for two players per school. Seven fifty-seven to play until halftime. Seven nothing Bulldogs. And I'll tell you what, Gus, this was a Ewing team that was talking about stopping, having to stop this Hopewell Valley rushing game, and so far they've not been successful with it. But they find themselves only down by seven. So gotta believe that they're able to get a stop here. Could still feel pretty good about themselves. Their offense though really has to get going. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Their defense has had key stops and has looked somewhat good at certain parts, but the offense has not, has not looked good overall. So if they want to get the First things turned around here, they're going to have to start with the offense. This was a Ewing offense that was looking to really be able to control the clock and could not say so they cannot afford three and outs. That's what they've done so far, and they find themselves down 7 nothing. Desai going to hand this one off to Ben Decor, who runs it forward to about the five-yard line. They'll say the four. So it'll bring up second down and goal now from the four, and they continue to have success on the ground as Hopewell Valley. So 
so far not quite the same offensive success as last week, but looking to go up two possessions here now with the Bulldogs. And under center is Desai for the first time. He hands this one off to DeCour, who's got a big hole and runs it right into the end zone for another touchdown for the Bulldogs. It makes it a 13-0 ball game. Yeah, just a fantastic overall drive by the Bulldogs and really just showing their physicality on the ground game. So Owen Lengel will come on for the extra point now as so far these Blue Devils have really had no answers for the Hopewell Valley run game. As Ben DeCour finds the end zone there for his first touchdown of the game, had two touchdowns last week. Owen Langle's extra point is up and it is right down the middle and good. So he's two for two now on extra points and it's 14 nothing with 7.20 to play until halftime. So still no first downs for Ewing and talking to Coach Madelon before this game, he was saying that they, some of the things they were trying to do was stop the power run game for Hopewell Valley. Well, so far they haven't really been able to do that. They've been on offense. They were trying to look to move the ball, control the clock, and he really just talked about how they cannot afford three and outs. This is a team that's not really built to throw the ball a whole lot. They've been, they're a team that's kind of built just to run the run the ball, run some clock out, and so far they've been unsuccessful at, at that as well. They're going to look to turn it around here, trailing 14 nothing. And don't forget, if you miss any of today's action, you can read all about it in tomorrow's edition of The Trentonian. For your complete local and national news seven days a week, it's The Trentonian or online at trentonian.com. The only newspaper serving Bucks, Burlington, and Mercer County seven days a week, it's The Trentonian. I'm sure they'll be covering this game as well here as Lengel's kickoff is angled towards the right sideline. It's going to bounce at the 33 and then be fallen on at the 30 by Tyler Seaton. And so that is where Ryan Gregg and the offense will come back out and start their this offensive drive. Ryan Gregg, another two sport athlete featured in this game. He's on the varsity baseball team at Ewing High School and six now, foot, 200 pound sophomore. Now that's definitely a sport, baseball. Can't argue with that, Gus. Gus, you were a catcher, am I, am I correct? Yep, in saying catcher that? and first baseman. Gregg takes a snap, hands it off to Devon Law, who's wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage there by. Narcy Didi. And it's going to bring up second down and 11 now on the loss of one. That's something that Ewing has really had trouble with, and that's going forward. They seems like they're behind the line of scrimmage on a lot of their plays. So second down and 11. As we finally get a little bit of a breeze here, Gus. That feels nice. It feels fantastic. Second and 11, they flip this one out to the right to Cordell Sloan, who breaks through one tackle and is able to carry it out to the 37. That's going to set up third down and short. They're going to call it third and three. And so now Ewing with maybe their best chance so far the game to pick up a first down. Cordell Sloan, a 5'9", 155 pound junior. Third down and three, six minutes to play until the half. They're gonna hand, no, they're gonna keep it with Greg, who carries it forward for a yard or two. He's not quite enough for the first down. It's gonna be fourth and short, and now we'll see what Coach Madelon decides to do. And actually it looks like before that play was snapped, we're gonna have a whistle and a flag. Looks like a false start there going against Ewing, so it's gonna back them up. Start. So that'll make it third down and eight instead, and it will give 
Ewing another chance here to pick up a first down, but now they're going to probably have to do it through the air. Third down and eight. So Greg in the shotgun again. Third and eight, looking to pick up the first first down of the game. Fires towards the marker, and it's incomplete. Well short. Looked like he was going for Nijay Manning there, but it fell about five yards in front of him. And so it's going to be another three and out for the Blue Devils, and they're going to send their punting unit back out there. Yeah, just a rough job right there on that third down to try to get the first down, but... Yeah, not, not the way that this Ewing offense was hoping to operate. Four drives and four three and outs. Obviously not a recipe for success at all. Fourth and eight. So the clock now shows 5.31 to play till halftime. And back deep to receive this punt is Luke Caldwell. He stands at the 36 yard line. A low snap picked up by Ovel Ayala, now gets it away. It bounces at the 47, and it's going to roll down inside the 45 to the 44. So, so far, Luke Caldwell hasn't had to return any of these punts so far. He's been out there, but hasn't gotten his hands on any of them. And Milan Desai and the Hopewell offense will come out and start in good field position here, already leading by 14. Yeah, it could be big here for Hopewell Valley to try to get some points before going into a half. It'll officially mark it at the 45. And, you know, Gus, so far we haven't had to see it yet because they really have been ha having so much success on the ground. But I kind of like to see Milan Desai start to throw the ball a little bit more. He's had a couple of plays where he has not been able to throw it accurately, obviously, an interception, a near interception. But watching, I was able to watch his game against Lawrence last week, and he could sling it a little bit. I'd like to see him maybe look to throw the ball more here. First play of this drive is a play action, so he's going to look to throw. Being chased by Simpkins, gets away from him. Now going to turn it upfield and get to the 50-yard line. So they go play action, but good coverage down the field by Ewing. Forces to side a run, and it's going to bring up a second down and five from midfield. Yeah, good job of recognizing that pocket collapsing and getting out of there quickly. He was being chased by the sophomore Sam Simpkins. He's been kind of all over the place on the defensive side for Ewing. Second and five, they hand it off to Yasher, and he's able to lower his shoulder and get this one out across the first down marker. I'll tell you what, Gus, these... Uh, these Hopewell Valley running backs are making these five, six yard gains look really easy, and that's a major credit to this offensive line. We mentioned they have two all conference players from last season, and they've been winning the battle of the trenches all game. Yeah, and your offense will go only as far as your running game will go, and it all starts with those offensive linemen up front, and they have done a great job today. It's a first and 10 plus territory. Yasher on the handoff, again runs it up the middle, and he's got eight more. And so the first quarter, we saw a heavy dose of Ben Decor. The second quarter has featured uh, Dylan Yasher as the feature back, who against Lawrence last week had seven rushes for 71 yards and a touchdown, also had a 30-yard reception as well. Six feet, 165-pound junior for Hopewell Valley. So second down and two. Desai in the shotgun, going to hand it off to Decor this time, and he's able to carry some defenders out across the first down marker out to the 32-yard line, and it's another first down for the Bulldogs. I mean, it's just a real luxury to have if you're the head coach Dave Caldwell for Hopewell Valley. Just have two very capable running backs going behind a great offensive line. This time they hand it off to Decor, who bounces off one tackle, now running to his left and is able to elude another man and carry it out to the 25-yard line, was able to get around Jaheim Rogers there. Another good run there. 
Yeah, and Amir Latimer was the one who finally Did brought he? him down. It's going to bring up second down and two. They'll mark it at the 24. Decor comes out and Yasher comes back in, so he'll be the back for this play. Second down. Second and two, you wonder if maybe you'll see Desai look to take a shot here. Obviously, if it falls incomplete, it would just bring up third down. Instead, they hand it off to Yasher up the middle. He's got a lot of running room, cuts it to his left, and is able to carry it down to the 10. Ball carried by number three. It's going to bring up first down and goal now as the running game just continues to have a successful play after successful play. We've got a player down now for Ewing. So with 2.29 to play here until halftime, and Hopewell Valley on top, 14-0, threatening again. An injured player for Ewing. I think we're going to take a quick break here and we'll be right back with more Hopewell Valley versus Ewing football action here on the WBCB Sports Network. This is Merrill Reese reminding you that Haldeman Ford Subaru on Route 33 in Hamilton Township is more than just a great place to purchase a new Ford Subaru or pre-owned car or truck. Their collision and service centers services all makes and models and specializes in fleet service. Haldeman's Collision Center is renowned for their work. It's a state-of-the-art facility. All insurance accepted, free estimates and loaner cars available, and one of the friendliest staffs around. From small dents to major repairs on any maker model, it's Haldeman Ford Subaru Collision Center, Route 33 in Hamilton Township. They're good! Hi, this is Mercer County Prosecutor Angelo Honorfree, and I hope you're enjoying today's game. I'd like to commend today's students for participating in today's event. Being a part of extracurricular activities, whether it's an athletic event, marching in the band, or performing in the school play, or being on the debate team, is good for today's youth. And parents, stay involved in your children's activities and encourage them. An involved parent nurtures your children to accomplish great things. I'm proud to support the youth of Mercer County. This is Angelo Honor for your Mercer County Prosecutor, and I hope you enjoyed today's game. Back here to Ewing High School is the player that was down, now up, walking under his own power to the Ewing sideline, so that's good to see. It's first down and goal from the 10 for the Bulldogs as they already hold a 14-0 lead and looking to get into the end zone again here before halftime. Ewing will receive the second half kick. But so far, their offensive game has been pretty much non-existent. And for Hopewell Valley, they've been able to run the ball pretty much whenever and however they've wanted to. The combination of Dylan Yasher and Ben DeCore, have, and along with this offensive line, have kind of proved too much so far in the first half for this Ewing defense. They're going to give it to DeCore here. He cuts it up the middle, and he falls very close to the goal line. They'll mark him down at the one. It's going to bring up second down and goal. Hopewell Valley going quickly here. They're going to put the side under center, maybe look to QB sneak it. He had two touchdowns that way last week, and he falls forward. We've got a flag here. And it's going to be a penalty going against Hopewell Valley. I think the penalty is going to be called for pushing Desai into the end zone. That's a new rule this season uh, that no you cannot. Push? Yeah, that you can't do the tush push, which was something that if you're an Eagles fan, you saw a lot of last season. You can't place your hands on the back of a quarterback and just push him over and just push him forward this season. That's a new rule. So, and that's what Hopewell Valley is penalized for there. So instead, it'll be second and goal from the six now. Ben DeCore in the backfield. He's already got one touchdown today. Desai going to give it to him, running to his left, carries it towards the goal line. Did he reach in? No signal yet. 
thinking they're going to call him just a bit short. That's what they do. So third down and one, and again, they're going to go into the hurry up. Looks like they're going for a QB sneak again. That's what they do. Desai's being pushed forward. No flag this time. Did he get in? Still no signal. He really only had to go a few inches, and that is what he did there. Call him in for the touchdown, Milan Desai. His third rushing touchdown of the season and his first here today makes it 20 to nothing. Yeah, and a big score going into halftime here for the Bulldogs. Yeah, they've jumped out to a 20 to nothing lead and Owen Langle on for the extra point. They've now outscored teams 61 zip through their first two games in the first half. Outscored Lawrence 41 nothing last week. Snap down, hold good, and the kick is good. The kick is good. Wasn't as high as the other two, but found its way through the uprights and makes it 21 to nothing with 105 to play till halftime. So now if you're the Ewing offense coming back out there down 21, maybe going to look to just try to get at least pick up a first down. That's something they've yet to do so far and maybe get a little confidence going into halftime. And so while we have a minute, I'd like to remind you that the Italian People's Bakery is proud to support high school sports on the WBCB Sports Network. Visit them at their signature location at 63 Butler Street for the finest rolls, deli meats, and pastries. Drive by to smell that homemade bread made daily or have them cater your next party or affair. The Italian People's Bakery, located on 63 Butler Street, is the place to go for the best hoagies on Sunday afternoon and the finest dessert trays for your special get-together. Visit them once again at 63 Butler Street in Chambersburg, the Italian People's Bakery, since 1936. You still hungry, Gus? We're getting close to halftime. I am starving, Jordan. I am thinking about food left and right. You gonna head down to the snack bar and bring us all something? No, I don't feel like walking. See, Gus, I'm trying to set you up here, but <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> so 105 to play till halftime. Lengel's had a couple of short kickoffs so far. He tries it again here. It bounces at the 41 and then is fallen on by Ewing. Ooh, that, was, that was a little scary there. Yeah, Sam Simpkins was able to fall on it, but had a couple of Bulldogs bearing down on him. During halftime, also be sure to stop by the Snack Shack and the Devil's Den fan table. Pick up a 50-50 ticket. You hear that, Some Gus? Stop by the stop by the snack soda. the snack uh, table and bring us all something. Oh, jeez, Jordan. So good starting field position for Ewing. They're gonna have it at their own 42. The 42. Ryan Gregg and the troops back out there. Devon Law in the backfield with them. They'll put a man in motion and flip to him. That's Cordell Sloan on the right side who turns it upfield and is able to carry it out to about the 48. So a good first down pickup there by Cordell Sloan. It's going to make it second down and five. Game of six. Second down and four. Down to 55 seconds to play in the half as Ewing will call a timeout and stop the clock. And so we talked a little bit earlier, Gus, about Hopewell Valley graduating 22 seniors and some major losses. We mentioned Tim McCune, who was the Mercer County Player of the Year last year. He's now playing at Gettysburg College. He had 34 total touchdowns and just three interceptions. Somebody else they also lost was their running back, Derek Van Brunt, who rushed for 1,299 yards, including eight touchdowns last season. And so far... He has not really been missed these first two games because Hopewell Valley's running game has just been has just really been nothing short of stellar. Yeah, it's been looking really good right now. And I know McEwen leaving, that was probably the biggest loss because I remember the playoff game against Notre Dame. He played absolutely lights out. Second down and four. They hand it off and it's fumbled. Oh, I think it's and a pile on it. Hopewell Valley says they've got it. And we'll see who comes out of the pile with it. It is the Bulldogs, so they force a turnover. 
and they're going to have a chance now to go down and score some more before halftime as they're able to force Ewing into their first turnover of the game. First and 10 Bulldogs. So Ewing will take over on, or I should say Hopewell Valley will take over on Ewing's 48. 49 seconds to play until halftime. And now we'll see if Hopewell Valley decides to continue to run the ball or try to force it through the air. They have two timeouts remaining. Desai in the shotgun, going to look to throw here. Quick pass to the left side for Tom Adenosio, and he's got a first down. First time we've seen Adenosio uh, used in this game. And that will move the chains out to the 33-yard line. And it looks like they said that he got out of bounds, so that stops the clock at 42 seconds. And before this play, timeout. whistles and a timeout is going to be called by Ewing. That's their last timeout of the half. And so Coach Madelon maybe going to go over some defensive scheme work here and as they try to stop Hopewell Valley, who have scored now three touchdowns now on three consecutive drives. As they've gotten out to this 21-0 lead. And you got to believe, Gus, at halftime that something Coach Madelon's going to go sure over with his team is really no being able to stop this offensive game. running game for Hopewell Valley because they've been able to do pretty much whatever they've wanted. Yeah, if they're going to want to have any success going forward in the second half, it's definitely going to be stopping that ground game for the Bulldogs. Just been so, so effective today and just really has looked above and beyond any other aspect of this game so far, and it's been really fun to watch. Mm, and, of course, for Ewing, it's kind of been on both sides of the ball troubles because their offense, five drives, four three-and-outs, and a fumble that was lost. And that's yeah. what's got Hopewell Valley here at the 33-yard line, first and 10. Desai going to look to throw, dumps it off, looking for Yasher out of the backfield, and the pass three. is incomplete. Broken up by number six, Josh Hizek. Second down. So second and down and 10 clock stops with 39 seconds to go. So far, Milan Desai not having the same uh, passing success that he had last week, but it hasn't mattered. Second down and 10. Got to believe he's going to be looking to throw here. He will. Got time, now pocket collapsing, and he's just able to get the throw away to the sideline as he was being taken down and was able just to avoid the, avoid the sack. I think Hope, or I think Ewing wants a uh, intentional grounding call. And Coach Madelon's in discussion with the refs, and they will not call intentional grounding as I guess they say that there was a receiver in the area. It's, it's either that down. or that Desai was able to get out of the pocket, they ruled. So third and 10 from the 33, 33 seconds to play until the half. Desai takes the snap, going to look to throw, going deep down the field. He's got a man wide open. That's Owen Lengel, and he's got an easy touchdown there. That's the first time we've seen Desai really sling the ball down the field, and it goes for a 33-yard connection to Owen Lengel for the fourth touchdown of the half for Hopewell Valley. Yeah, wide open there. Just nobody around him, but perfect throw. Put it right in the bread basket. Beautiful touchdown to go into half by Hopewell Valley. And now Owen Langle, who's got a touchdown on the ground today, also adds one through the air. And he's out there as the kicker looking to add the extra point. He's three for three so far. He's made his last eight extra point attempts. He missed the first one last week against Lawrence, made the next five. And looking to add one here, nearly blocked, but was able to get it away and get it through the uprights and make it 28 nothing. Cordell Sloan coming off the left side was eight, was nearly able to get around and get his hands on that. But the kick was just able to elude him and go up through the uprights to make it 28 nothing.
And so make that 69 points that Hopewell Valley has now put up in the first half of games so far this season, this just being their second game of the year as they've really dominated the first half. And you wonder if they're going to be in position now to rest their starters again like they were able to last week. We remind you at halftime, we'll take a quick, a quick break after the conclusion of play here, then come back with our halftime show. Gus and I are going to break down a first half that has really just been all Hopewell Valley. They've dominated this game from the opening kickoff. Their run game, of course, has been the, a big factor in that. As Lengel's kickoff away is another short one angled towards the left side this time. And coming up to take it there was Nijay Manning, who slides and makes the, the grab around the 41. So Ewing's definitely had some good starting field position in this game, but has not been able to do anything with it. They'll start this drive at the 42, which is right where they started their last drive that ended in the fumble by Devon Law that set Hopewell Valley up in plus territory. They were able to go down and score that last touchdown there. And so now with 27 seconds to go till halftime, it looks like Ryan Gregg will just take a knee, and that's what he'll do. We're going to go to halftime with the score, Hopewell Valley 28 and Ewing nothing. It's been all Bulldogs so far and don't go anywhere because we're going to be right back with our halftime show right here on the WBCB Sports Network. New Jersey is home to the best public schools in the nation and that didn't happen by accident. It's the result of parents, educators and communities working together year after year to give our students a world-class education no matter the challenge because parents and educators know that with a shared commitment to our public schools our children can learn, grow, and thrive. And together, we can keep New Jersey's public schools the best in the nation. Capital Health's primary care network continues to grow, bringing its extensive option of locations to your neighborhood. Whether you're scheduling a wellness checkup or not feeling well, Advanced Medicine starts with a Capital Health primary care doctor at locations near you in Mercer, Bucks, and Burlington counties. To find a Capital Health primary care location that's convenient for you, visit capitalmedicalgroup.org. That's capitalmedicalgroup.org. There really is nothing like a home team advantage. That's why Team Toyota is the choice for your next vehicle purchase or service this season. With new Toyota models available for immediate delivery and over 100 certified used and pre-owned vehicles for any budget plus service specials to keep you on the road to victory. Shop or schedule online at teamtoyota.net or choose one of our three locations in Langhorne, Glen Mills, or Princeton. Are you part of the team? Hi, Merrill Reese remind you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly or New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs, plus catering. For reservations, call 609-882-6365 at 609-882-6365. Come home to traditional Italian cuisine, the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. This is Merrill Reese reminding you that Haldeman Ford Subaru on Route 33 in Hamilton Township is more than just a great place to purchase a new Ford Subaru or pre-owned car or truck. Their collision and service centers services all makes and models and specializes in fleet service. Haldeman's Collision Center is renowned for their work. It's a state-of-the-art facility. All insurance accepted, free estimates and loaner cars available, and one of the friendliest staffs around. From small dents to major repairs on any make or model, 
model. It's Haldeman Ford Subaru Collision Center, Route 33 in Hamilton Township. They're good! Hi, this is Mercer County Prosecutor Angelo Honorfree, and I hope you're enjoying today's game. I'd like to commend today's students for participating in today's event. Being a part of extracurricular activities, whether it's an athletic event, marching in the band, or performing in the school play, or being on the debate team, is good for today's youth. And parents, stay involved in your children's activities and encourage them. An involved parent nurtures your children to accomplish great things. I'm proud to support the youth of Mercer County. This is Angelo Honor for your Mercer County Prosecutor, and I hope you enjoyed today's game. New Jersey is home to the best public schools in the nation, and that didn't happen by accident. It's the result of parents, educators, and communities working together year after year to give our students a world-class education, no matter the challenge. Because parents and educators know that with a shared commitment to our public schools, our children can learn, grow, and thrive. And together, we can keep New Jersey's public schools the best in the nation. Capital Health's primary care network continues to grow bringing its extensive option of locations to your neighborhood. Whether you're scheduling a wellness checkup or not feeling well, Advanced Medicine starts with a Capital Health primary care doctor at locations near you in Mercer, Bucks, and Burlington counties. To find a Capital Health primary care location that's convenient for you, visit capitalmedicalgroup.org. That's capitalmedicalgroup.org. There really is nothing like a home team advantage. That's why Team Toyota is the choice for your next vehicle purchase or service this season. With new Toyota models available for immediate delivery and over 100 certified used and pre-owned vehicles for any budget. Plus service specials to keep you on the road to victory. Shop or schedule online at teamtoyota.net or choose one of our three locations in Langhorne, Glen Mills or Princeton. Are you part of the team? Hi, Merrill Reese Remind you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly or New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs, plus catering. For reservations, call 609-882-6365 at 609-882-6365. Come home to traditional Italian cuisine, the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. This is Merrill Reese reminding you that Haldeman Ford Subaru on Route 33 in Hamilton Township is more than just a great place to purchase a new Ford Subaru or pre-owned car or truck. Their collision and service centers services all makes and models and specializes in fleet service. Haldeman's Collision Center is renowned for their work. It's a state-of-the-art facility. All insurance accepted, free estimates and loaner cars available, and one of the friendliest staffs around. From small dents to major repairs on any maker model, Model, it's Haldeman Ford Subaru Collision Center, Route 33 in Hamilton Township. They're good! Hi, this is Mercer County Prosecutor Angelo Honorfree, and I hope you're enjoying today's game. I'd like to commend today's students for participating in today's event. Being a part of extracurricular activities, whether it's an athletic event, marching in the band, or performing in the school play, or being on the debate team, is good for today's youth. And parents, Stay involved in your children's activities and encourage them. An involved parent nurtures your children to accomplish great things. I'm proud to support the youth of Mercer County. This is Angelo Honor for your Mercer County Prosecutor, and I hope you enjoyed today's game. New Jersey is home to the best public schools in the nation, and that didn't happen by accident. It's the result of parents, educators, and communities working together year after year to give our students a world-class education, no matter the challenge. Because parents and educators know that with a shared commitment to our public schools, our children can learn, grow, and thrive. And together, we can keep New Jersey's public schools the best in the nation. Capital Health's primary care network continues to grow bringing its extensive option of locations to your neighborhood. 
Whether you're scheduling a wellness checkup or not feeling well, Advanced Medicine starts with a Capital Health primary care doctor at locations near you in Mercer, Bucks, and Burlington counties. To find a Capital Health primary care location that's convenient for you, visit capitalmedicalgroup.org. That's capitalmedicalgroup.org. There really is nothing like a home team advantage. That's why Team Toyota is the choice for your next vehicle purchase or service this season. With new Toyota models available for immediate delivery and over 100 certified used and pre-owned vehicles for any budget. Plus service specials to keep you on the road to victory. Shop or schedule online at teamtoyota.net or choose one of our three locations in Langhorne, Glen Mills, or Princeton. Are you part of the team? Hi, Merrill Reese reminding you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly or New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs, plus catering. For reservations, call 609-882-6365. At 609-882-6365, come home to traditional Italian cuisine. The Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. This is Merrill Reese reminding you that Haldeman Ford Subaru on Route 33 in Hamilton Township is more than just a great place to purchase a new Ford Subaru or pre-owned car or truck. Their collision and service centers services all makes and models and specializes in fleet service. Haldeman's Collision Center is renowned for their work. It's a state-of-the-art facility. All insurance accepted, free estimates and loaner cars available, and one of the friendliest staffs around. From small dents to major repairs on any make or model, Model, it's Haldeman Ford Subaru Collision Center, Route 33 in Hamilton Township. They're good! Hi, this is Mercer County Prosecutor Angelo Honorfree, and I hope you're enjoying today's game. I'd like to commend today's students for participating in today's event. Being a part of extracurricular activities, whether it's an athletic event, marching in the band, or performing in the school play, or being on the debate team, is good for today's youth. And parents, Stay involved in your children's activities and encourage them. An involved parent nurtures your children to accomplish great things. I'm proud to support the youth of Mercer County. This is Angelo Honor for your Mercer County prosecutor, and I hope you enjoyed today's game. We welcome you back here to Bruce S. Smart's Field on the campus of Ewing High School, and we have reached halftime here. It is 28 0. Hopewell Valley on top, and they've really been able to do most of their offensive damage on the ground. How about these numbers? 224 total rushing yards for Hopewell Valley in the first half. 161 of those by the junior running back, Ben DeCour, who also has found the end zone for a touchdown. And Gus, so far no answers by Ewing for this Hopewell Valley run game. What have you seen? Yeah, I've just seen dominance up front with the linemen when uh – your linemen can dictate the ground game. It's going to take your offense to a whole nother level, and you've seen that today with this Bulldogs offense. The offensive linemen have just been able to control the trenches and really, excuse me, do whatever they want physically up front, and that's allowed Hopewell Valley to really get anything they want going offensively. In the passing game, it's been Milan Desai as the quarterback, and he's coming off of a game where he threw for over 200 yards against Lawrence in the first half last week. Hasn't really been used the same way here today. Just 44 passing yards, but include that includes a 33-yard touchdown pass to Owen Lengel, Milan Desai. Um, he's just hasn't had to be used. He's had a, he had a kind of a tough first quarter through one interception, but looked a lot better on the last drive of the second quarter. And got to believe that we're probably not going to see a whole lot of him in the second half because with this big lead for Hopewell Valley, got to believe they're probably just going to try to run the ball and run the clock out a little bit. On the other side for Ewing, they have been held scoreless now through their last six quarters of action, and they've yet to pick up a first down so far in this game. It's been on six drives. The last drive ended in a QB kneel down, but the first five were four straight punts, and then 
one fumble recovery. Gus, is there anything really that they can do maybe now try to look to build some momentum going into their next game? Definitely. I think this game was definitely one of those games where it's a momentum builder. It's definitely for both teams, even though it's not going the way for Ewing. You've seen some positives in this Ewing defense so far. Couple, the very first interception in the beginning of the game, almost another interception the very next drive, couple sacks back into the backfield. So there's been quality, quality plays for the Ewing defense. It's just offensively, they got to figure out a couple things out, passing wise and running wise, to, to get things going ahead of the season for the rest of the season. And Hopewell Valley, they keep playing like they're doing right now. They're going to have another very successful season and go deep in the playoffs again. Yeah, they went to that Group 3 uh, sectional final game last year. Unfortunately, they did end up losing 44-7 to Delcy in that one. But it was a real successful season last year, 10-1, and including an undefeated regular season. They went 8-0 and there. And you're right, Gus. If they keep playing like this, they're going to be just fine, obviously, with a new quarterback this year in Milan Desai. And their run game, though, has really been the story. The offensive line has been great. They've been winning the battle of the trenches this whole game as we await both teams to come back out from the locker room. And Gus, 28 nothing lead. What do you think Coach Caldwell is going over with his guys right now? I just stay physical and keep doing what they're doing. They've been having a good game offensively, defensively, and just trying to keep on the same page. He's, I've, I've liked what I've seen from this Bulldogs team, and I bet you the coach has liked has also liked what he's seen from this Bulldogs team. And coach Caldwell, a well-experienced coach here at Hopewell Valley in his 22nd season. He's been the head coach since the football program returned. He was the Trentonian co-sports person of the year last year, along with Robbinsville boys soccer coach Jeff Fisher. So definitely a well-experienced head coach there for Hopewell Valley. On the other side, Ewing in his second year as head coach, it's Ross Madelon. He's, his team is on the wrong end of that 28 nothing score. And what do you think maybe he's going over with the, with, with the Blue Devils right now, Gus? Yeah, just offensively, just a complete overhaul right now with what they're doing. They haven't really gotten anything going offensively, and it hasn't even looked good at times. It's just looked really bad. So offensively, he's going to have to tell his guys to really get their – get their gears in to check because it is not looking great offensively and defensively. Try to keep putting as much pressure as you can in the backfield and trying to make the run game slowing down a little bit. But the way this Hopewell Valley run game's going, it doesn't look like they're going to get slowed down at all. Yeah, Coach Madelon, a very offensive-minded coach. He's been the offensive line coach and the offensive coordinator at four different high schools before coming here to Ewing. He was at Nottingham, Old Bridge, Northern Burlington County and Cinnaminson all before taking the head coaching job here at Ewing before last season. He was really talking about how in their shutout loss to Steinert last week that his team kind of just shot themselves in the foot too many times that they had to fix the fixables in practice. And so far, we haven't really seen that so far uh, yet today as both teams continue to wait in the locker room. So we're going to take one more break. And after this break, we're going to be right back with the second half of action between Hopewell Valley and Ewing right here on the WBCB Sports Network. Capital Health's primary care network continues to grow, bringing its extensive option of locations to your neighborhood. Whether you're scheduling a wellness checkup or not feeling well, advanced medicine starts with a Capital Health primary care doctor at locations near you in Mercer, Bucks, and Burlington counties. To find a Capital Health primary care location that's convenient for you, visit capitalmedicalgroup.org. That's capitalmedicalgroup.org. There really is nothing like a home team advantage. That's why Team Toyota is the choice for your next vehicle purchase or service this season. With new Toyota models available for immediate delivery and over 100 certified used and pre-owned vehicles for any budget. Plus service specials to keep you on the road to victory. Shop or schedule online at teamtoyota.net or choose one of our three locations in Langhorne, Glen Mills, or Princeton. Are you part of the team? Hi, Merrill Reese reminding you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like 
Stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly or New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs, plus catering. For reservations, call 609-882-6365 at 609-882-6365. Come home to traditional Italian cuisine, the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. 1490 WBCB, Levitan and Trenton, and video stream. This is Merrill Reese reminding you that Haldeman Ford Subaru on Route 33 in Hamilton Township is more than just a great place to purchase a new Ford Subaru or pre-owned car or truck. Their collision and service centers services all makes and models and specializes in fleet service. Haldeman's Collision Center is renowned for their work. It's a state-of-the-art facility. All insurance accepted, free estimates and loaner cars available, and one of the friendliest staffs around. From small dents to major repairs on any maker model, Model. It's Haldeman Ford Subaru Collision Center, Route 33 in Hamilton Township. They're good! Hi, this is Mercer County Prosecutor Angelo Honorfree, and I hope you're enjoying today's game. I'd like to commend today's students for participating in today's event. Being a part of extracurricular activities, whether it's an athletic event, marching in the band, or performing in the school play, or being on the debate team, is good for today's youth. And parents, Stay involved in your children's activities and encourage them. An involved parent nurtures your children to accomplish great things. I'm proud to support the youth of Mercer County. This is Angelo Honor for your Mercer County Prosecutor, and I hope you enjoyed today's game. New Jersey is home to the best public schools in the nation, and that didn't happen by accident. It's the result of parents, educators, and communities working together year after year to give our students a world-class education, no matter the challenge. Because parents and educators know that with a shared commitment to our public schools, our children can learn, grow, and thrive. And together, we can keep New Jersey's public schools the best in the nation. Capital Health's primary care network continues to grow bringing its extensive option of locations to your neighborhood. Whether you're scheduling a wellness checkup or not feeling well, advanced medicine starts with a Capital Health primary care doctor at locations near you in Mercer, Bucks, and Burlington counties. To find a Capital Health primary care location that's convenient for you, visit capitalmedicalgroup.org. That's capitalmedicalgroup.org. There really is nothing like a home team advantage. That's why Team Toyota is the choice for your next vehicle purchase or service this season. With new Toyota models available for immediate delivery and over 100 certified used and pre-owned vehicles for any budget. Plus service specials to keep you on the road to victory. Shop or schedule online at teamtoyota.net or choose one of our three locations in Langhorne, Glen Mills, or Princeton. Are you part of the team? Hi, Merrill Reese reminds you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly or New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs, plus catering. For reservations, call 609-882-6365 at 609-882-6365. Come home to traditional Italian cuisine, the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. This is Merrill Reese reminding you that Haldeman Ford Subaru on Route 33 in Hamilton Township is more than just a great place to purchase a new Ford Subaru or pre-owned car or truck. Their collision and service centers services all makes and models and specializes in fleet service. Haldeman's Collision Center is renowned for their work. It's a state-of-the-art facility. All insurance accepted, free estimates and loaner cars available, and one of the friendliest staffs around. From small dents to major repairs on any maker model, Model, it's Haldeman Ford Subaru Collision Center, Route 33 in Hamilton Township. They're good! 
Welcome back to Ewing High School, where we are now about set for the second half of action between the Bulldogs and the Blue Devils. It's Hopewell Valley 28, Ewing nothing. The Blue Devils will receive the second half kickoff as they won the toss and deferred. And which means we're going to see their offense back out there. It's been a real struggle for them so far. No first down pickups in that first half. I also would like to remind you that if Hopewell was able to get out to a 33-point lead or more, we will have the running clock, which means the clock would not stop unless there was a touchdown or a flag or something like that. But if the ball went out of bounds or something that would typically make the clock stop, it will keep running. And that is if Hopewell is able to extend their lead to 33. Of course. Yeah, yes, yeah, so only a score, timeout, penalty, or an injury will stop the clock once the and score differential the reaches uh, 33 points, which score, would be points. another Hopewell yeah, Valley zero. touchdown. Yeah, and that's something that Hopewell Valley was able to do last week, getting out to a 41-point halftime lead. So they were sure able to get that, that running clock and pick up that 41 to 6 win over Lawrence. It kind of looks like they're headed that way here today, but Ewing, unless they made some major adjustments, they might have a real tough time here stopping this Bulldogs offense. Ewing will get the ball first, though, and look to maybe get some momentum going here to start this third quarter. Obviously, this game not quite out of reach yet, but down 28 nothing. You've got to have really a complete turnaround from the first half does Ewing. Owen Lengel kicks it away and we're off with the second half of action. It's fielded at the 27 yard line by Rashawn Williams who carries it out around the 40. That's where they'll mark him at. And so more good starting field position for Ewing. They've had no lack of good starting, of good starting position but just haven't really been able to do anything with it yet. Yeah, see if uh, maybe this is the drive that'll change. So they'll start it at their 40, and Ryan Gregg, the quarterback, back out there. As we wait for a loose football to come off the field, now we're good. First play from scrimmage is a flip to Cordell Sloan, and he is met behind the line of scrimmage there by by uh, Steven Daniels. They've used that flip play a few times now, and that was the first one that went backwards, and it's going to make it second down and 11. I see some 50-50 tickets for sale down in the front. Call them over to you so you have your chance to win big. On second down, Greg going to look to throw to the right side. Pass is high but caught by Najee Manning, and he's met immediately right there by Allen Patterson, the first-team all-conference defensive back for Hopewell Valley from last season, is able to hold that to a gain of about four. It's going to bring up third and seven. Allen Patterson had an interception in last week's game also on the basketball team so yet another uh, multi-sport athlete on the field today third and seven they put a man in motion Greg rolling to his left pass is caught there by Amir Latimer makes one man miss a tackle and is able to carry it out to the 45 he's short of the first down marker it's gonna be fourth down and five and the punting unit is going to come back out there. So still no first down pickups for Ewing. And we're going to see the punter, Jose Ovel Ayala, yet again here. Luke Caldwell back deep to receive. He's yet to touch any of these punts. So he's kind of just let them bounce and roll. He'll stand at the 22-yard line. It's a high snap this time. Ovale Ayala's got it now, kicks it away. Caldwell's gonna let it bounce. It bounces at the 24 yard line and goes out of bounds right there. And so that is where Milan Desai and the Hopewell offense will start their first drive of the second half. Thought maybe uh, Coach Caldwell would empty his bench here like he did last week, but still sticking with the starters for now. Yeah, that clock hasn't started yet. Trying to get that running clock and then maybe uh 
look at bringing in the, the bench guys. And the backup quarterback for this team is the sophomore Grayson Vlasic, who got into the game for a half last week. Was They used mostly the running game. He was one for one himself through the air, sacked a couple of times. So far, still Milan Desai, though, out there. Milan Desai had 44 yards through the air and a touchdown in the first half. In the first play here, he tries to draw Ewing off sides and looks like he did. So the hard count got a couple of Blue Devils defensive linemen to jump. And so they'll call the offsides. It'll make it first down and five, bring the ball out to the 29-yard line. First down and five. Again, they try the hard count. This time, Ewing stays put. Desai going to look to throw this time. Going to air it out down the field, looking for Langle into double coverage, and he comes down with it. Wow. What a play by Owen Langle out across midfield to the 35. What a throw there. Threaded the needle in between the corner oh, and the safety. There is a flag, flag down back near the original line of scrimmage. They're going to call a holding on Hopewell Valley, and so that big play is coming back. Man, Ewing catches a real break right there. Big break. First down. It's going to replay first down. It's going to make it first and 15. Although it is kind of nice to see Coach Caldwell letting Desai throw the ball. Thought maybe they would just try to run the ball here a lot in the second half and run out the clock a little bit, but they're opting otherwise, and Desai, who's got a cannon, let it fly there. We'll see if they continue to let him throw it here on first and 15 this time. Hard count doesn't get Ewing to jump. Motion bend to court over and out of the right side. Desai going to look to throw in first and 15. Pass is dropped by Adenosio, looking for him on the slant route. Throw is a little bit behind him there, and it's going to bring up second down and 15. Ball placed on the 19-yard line. As The Ewing sideline trying to get the crowd into it a little bit now. They've kind of had to sit on their hands all game with not a lot going right for their team. Second and 15, Desai going to roll to his left, going to fire over his body, and the catch is made there by Luke Caldwell. Out around the original line of scrimmage, it's going to bring up a third down and 10. It's third down and 10. So ball back out to the 24-yard line, and got to believe we're going to see Milan Desai let it, let it fly here again. It's really been just that one big play, the 33-yard touchdown to end the second half, or for that, to end the first half to Owen Lengel, and that's kind of been it in terms of the deep ball so far. Obviously, the one called back on this drive. Desai looking to throw third and 10, has some time, steps up, fires it, incomplete. Going across the middle there for Luke Caldwell, but it was just a little bit too high out of his reach, and that's going to force Hopewell to bring their punting unit out there. Yeah, it looked like he had him open too, just a little bit overthrown there, and almost an acrobatic catch, but goes incomplete, and we have fourth down. Yeah, Luke Caldwell, who was, of course, a first team all conference defensive back last season, getting some run here in the offense, and you're right, he was almost he almost got up there for it, but the pass just eluded him too high. So Owen Lengel on to punt. It's a low line drive kick that bounces at the 50 and is then bobbled by the return man, but recovered at the 40. That was Desan Jones. And so more good starting field position for Ewing. It's been a trend so far, and we'll see if 
they can maybe get some offensive rhythm here for this drive. And I'll tell you what, Gus, I've really never seen a team continue to start with these short fields usually starting around the 40, 41 yard line here for this drive and not really be able to do anything with it. First and 10 of the 41. 8.15 to go in the third. Greg in the shotgun. Puts a man in motion. That was Evan Nixon. Now Greg going to look to take the snap. He'll hand it off to Law. Or no, he won't. He'll pull it back. He'll flip it to Cordell Sloan, who's then tripped up right at about the line of scrimmage. That was a pretty good fake. No Fooled me, but did not fool the Hopewell Valley defense. And yeah. they're able to get a quick stop right there, bring up second and ten. Yeah, faked me out as well. Well, that's going to happen when you have those multiple running options. You can either keep it yourself, give it to the one running back, or give it to the pitch. So second down and ten. Good luck, ladies. Ryan Gregg, who it was a bit of a struggle for him at St against Steinert last week, 89 yards through the air, and it's kind of been even worse so far today. Ewing's tried most of their plays on the ground. And second and 10 here. They're going to look to throw. Gets the pass. Tipped and intercepted there. It was tipped by J.M. Vlasic and then picked off by Johnny Ellis. And, st and everything continuing to go right so far for Hopewell Valley as they're going to take over now with a short field. Yeah, great job there just to get a hand on the ball and doing a tip drill there by the Bulldogs. Yeah, and a good job by J.M. Vlasic to really read the eyes of Ryan Gray, go up there, and he's able to get a hand on it, and that allowed the ball to fall right into Johnny Ellis's hands. So the second turnover of the game there for Ewing, first interception. And Hopewell will start with the ball on Ewing's 36-yard line. Milan Desai back out there along with the rest of the starters. Man-to-man -man coverage being shown here by Ewing. The size got it, looking to throw quickly over the middle. That pass is juggled and incomplete. <laughs> Trying to get it there to Luke Caldwell. Well, they do call that a cat. Ewing saying that ball was dropped, and now the ref's in discussion. And they are going to rule incomplete. I think one official had it as a completed pass. One had it as an incomplete pass. And the original call gets overruled. So second down and 10. Desai going to hand this one off to Decor. First time we've seen him in the second half. And he's running to the left and is able to carry it for a gain of about eight. Out across the 30-yard line. And Cordell Sloan. Seven. Now a injury Third looks down. like to a Hopewell Valley player. Uh, as he's down along that left sideline. So we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with more high school football action on the WBCB Sports Network. This is Merrill Reese reminding you that Haldeman Ford Subaru on Route 33 in Hamilton Township is more than just a great place to purchase a new Ford Subaru or pre-owned car or truck. Their collision and service centers services all makes and models and specializes in fleet service. Haldeman's Collision Center is renowned for their work. It's a state-of-the-art facility. All insurance accepted, free estimates and loaner cars available, and one of the friendliest staffs around. From small dents to major repairs on any make or model, Model, it's Haldeman Ford Subaru Collision Center, Route 33 in Hamilton Township. They're good! Capital Health's primary care network continues to grow, bringing its extensive option of locations to your neighborhood. Whether you're scheduling a wellness checkup or not feeling well, Advanced Medicine starts with a Capital Health primary care doctor at locations near you in Mercer, Bucks, and Burlington counties. To find a Capital Health primary care location that's convenient for you, visit CapitalMedicalGroup.org. That's CapitalMedicalGroup.org. Hi, this is Mercer County Prosecutor Angelo Onerfree, and I hope you're enjoying today's game. 
I'd like to commend today's students for participating in today's event. Being a part of extracurricular activities, whether it's an athletic event, marching in the band, or performing in the school play, or being on the debate team is good for today's youth. And parents, stay involved in your children's activities and encourage them. An involved parent nurtures your children to accomplish great things. I'm proud to support the youth of Mercer County. This is Angelo Honor for your Mercer County Prosecutor, and I hope you enjoyed today's game. New Jersey is home to the best public schools in the nation, and that didn't happen by accident. It's the result of parents, educators, and communities working together year after year to give our students a world-class education, no matter the challenge. Because parents and educators know that with a shared commitment to our public schools, our children can learn, grow, and thrive. And together... Back here to Ewing High School, the player that was down is now up and over to the sideline. So third down and three for Hopewell on the Ewing 29-yard line. Desai in the shotgun. Takes the snap, looking to throw over the middle. Got a man, that's Vlasic. He makes the catch at the 10, cuts it back to the right and scores. That's complete number 11. J.M. Vlasic, you had a huge game last week against Lawrence, 102 yards and a touchdown is on the board here in the second half and makes it a 34-0 game, which is gonna cue the running clock as well as it's been all, all Hopewell Valley, and that script stays the same here in the second half so far. Yeah, just a fantastic job just to let the play progress and find his open receiver there, and just a great job by Vlasic to fight off a couple defenders and get in the end zone there. Well, Owen Lengel on for the extra point. So far he's made them all, and the announcer jinx is not true right there. Oh, you're lucky, Jordan. Because he's now five for five. Score. Makes it a 35 nothing ball game. J.M. Vlasic, he's a 6'4 senior, 215, and he was first team. He was a first team All Conference tight end last season. He's also been third team All Conference and first team All Conference at a different point in his Hopewell Valley career. Another two sport athlete. He's also on the basketball team and. Coach Caldwell was really singing his praises this week, saying that he expects Vlasic to be one of the best players in Mercer County this season. He's called him versatile and a leader on this team. His younger brother, Grayson, we mentioned him a bit earlier. He's the backup quarterback, and it's very possible that later in this game we're going to see him play as the Bulldogs have opened up a 35-0 lead here with 6.14 to play in the third quarter. Be interesting to see going ahead. While we have a minute, I'd like to remind you that the TD Club is proud to recognize those players who have had a significant impact on their team's performance through the first half of the season. The TD Club will pay for two players per school as Owen Lengel out now to kick this ball away with his team on top big, angles it towards the Ewing sideline. It bounces at the 31, checks down there. And then how about that? It's recovered by Hopewell wow. Valley. That was Kevin Petrillo able to get his hands on that. He took a direct route to that ball, and that almost acts now as an onside kick as the Bulldogs will send their offense right back out there in great field position. Yeah, it goes from bad to worse for these Blue Devils. Yeah, now everything going right. Offense, defense, and special teams getting in on the action for Hopewell Valley. And so that Ewing defense that has been out there a lot this game is gonna have to head right back out there on the field. And we've been talking about the weather conditions a lot here today, Gus. It's hot, you gotta believe these guys are pretty tired right now. Yeah, especially this early in the season. Those, these are the type of games that, not even just for the linemen, but for even the skill positions, these games get a little hard because you get cramping, you get the sweats. It's just, it's just not football weather quite yet. Well, Milan Desai and the starters are back out there. We're gonna have a running clock now. Desai takes a snap, rolling to his left. Now going to cut it upfield, look to run. And he's brought down by Joshua Baker out around the 25. And so that's going to make it second down. Second down. Second down. 
448 to play. Second down and five. Second down. Desai, high snap, takes it, gives it to Yasher, running up the middle. He's got running room. He's got a first down out into the red zone now, barreling his way down to the 13-yard line. First down. Oh, mark it officially at the 14. It'll set up first down and 10. As this Ewing defense continues to be gashed by the run game and the offensive line. Desai in the shotgun, first and 10, hands it off to Yasher, and he's met immediately in the backfield by Omir Benning. And so that'll be a loss of a couple yards. It's going to make it second down and long. They'll say he was tackled at the 17, so it's a loss of two. Second down, or officially called a loss of three, second and 13. Another shotgun look here for the Bulldogs. Desai with Yasher on his left. Takes a snap. Milan Desai looking to throw. Rolling to his right. Gets out of the pocket. Pressure in his face now. Has to get around one man. Looking to take off and run. And he's brought down by a duo of Blue Devils. And is able to take it out to the 13-yard line. So he's able to get a handful of yards there. Make it third and nine. And three. Third down. Got to say, Gus, I'm a little surprised they're continuing to look to throw the ball here, but with a very capable quarterback, the size looked pretty good so far in the second half. Yeah, and even if he does throw the ball and it's not complete, it's not like the clock will stop. It's No matter what you call, the play is going to keep going. This pass here is dropped by Johnny Ellis as the side led him maybe a little bit too far. It's going to bring up fourth down and nine. We'll see if Coach Caldwell decides to leave the offense out there. Looks like... That's what he's going to do, Desai getting the call from the sideline. And the offense will stay out there, fourth down and nine. Hopewell Valley's 0 for 1 so far on fourth down conversions. They had one fall, they had a pass fall incomplete in the red zone on fourth down back in the first quarter. It's fourth down and nine. So fourth and nine now from the 13, Desai takes the snap. Looking for the end zone. Man coverage going up top, and it's incomplete. Off oh, the hands of Luke Caldwell, though. but a flag comes in late. And I think they're going to call Cordell Sloan for pass interference there as he was in coverage. Yeah, he was draped all over the receiver there. Pass interference. And that's what the call is. So that's going to be a half the distance penalty. It's going to bring the ball now down to the seven-yard line. And... Give Hopewell Valley a fresh set, of fresh, fresh set of downs, easy for me to say, and make it first and goal. Down to 136 to play here in the third quarter. It's been all Bulldogs all day, 35-0. Jordan Hirsch alongside Gus Barbers. We thank you all for tuning in here on WBCB for some Saturday afternoon lights, if you will. Saturday Sun football. Yeah, we got lights provided by the sun. It counts. So Hopewell taking a little while here to get out of the huddle as I think Milan Desai went over there to the sideline to get the play call. And three. So I guess, I guess they called a penalty against Ewing, but that, that wasn't pass interference. So it makes it fourth and three. They hand it off to Yasher this time. He runs up the middle. He's going to be oh, short of the goal line, but he's got the first down the out to the three. So a little first bit of down. confusion in there, I think, as to what the call was. Yeah, it must have been like a holding call on the, the DB or some something in that nature. Yeah, it was still fourth down, so I wonder if they just called them off sides. 
anyways, they do they? pick up the first down there. So it's first and goal from the two. Under a minute now to play here in the third. And Hopewell Valley looking to find the end zone yet again. Desai in the shotgun on first down. Dylan Yasher on his left. We'll see if they give it to him. They don't. Desai going to look to throw. Going for the end zone. He's got a man wide open. That's Owen Lengel, and he makes the catch for his third overall touchdown of the game. Second through the air. And now Hopewell Valley has hung 41 on another opponent, and they're going to look to make it 42 here with this extra point attempt. Yeah, and just a great day overall for this Hopewell Valley offense, and just right from the get-go, it looked like they were clicking on all gears, and you see it right there. Owen Langell, who had a big 45-yard play last week against Lawrence, is making his presence felt now with two touchdowns through the air and one on the ground, and he's also the kicker for this team. He's so far five for five on extra points, and you can make that six for six as that one's up and good. It's 42 nothing, and that ends the third quarter with Hopewell Valley all over Ewing, and we will be right back with the fourth quarter of action here on the WBCB Sports Network. There really is nothing like a home team advantage. That's why Team Toyota is the choice for your next vehicle purchase or service this season. With new Toyota models available for immediate delivery and over 100 certified used and pre-owned vehicles for any budget. Plus service specials to keep you on the road to victory. Shop or schedule online at teamtoyota.net or choose one of our three locations in Langhorne, Glen Mills, or Princeton. Are you part of the team? New Jersey is home to the best public schools in the nation. And that didn't happen by accident. It's the result of parents, educators, and communities working together year after year to give our students a world-class education, no matter the challenge. Because parents and educators know that with a shared commitment to our public schools, our children can learn, grow, and thrive. And together, we can keep New Jersey's public schools the best in the nation. Welcome back here to Ewing High School as we're about set to start the fourth quarter of action with Hopewell Valley on top, 42-0. And Owen Lengel getting set to kick this ball away after it was him that caught the touchdown pass, a two-yard touchdown pass from Milan Desai on the previous possession. Desai runs up, boots it deep for the first time in this game. It's angled towards Brian Carter Jr. who's now gonna try to reverse fields, running out at the 25-yard line. Gets around one man and then is run out of bounds by Joe, Demar De Gemmer Joe Demareski. And it's going to set Ewing up at the 30. Well, you got your ticket, Jordan? I do not. Dang Dusty, it. You, do you have one? I didn't have one either. Dang. I thought you were going to go get one because one. if you won, you could have then got us all food. Uh, I could have, but Six. oh well. The ball Six, will be at the 35 with 11.35 to go in the game. Ewing still looking for their Again, first first one, down. Seven, six, eight, six, two. If you are the winner, if you are holding the winning ticket, please report Ryan to the Greg blue back double out there. Next to the snack stand to receive your winning. It's been a struggle, that's for sure, for pretty much every facet of Ewing's offense so far. They're going to hand this one off. And running forward for a first down there is number 16. There's no 16 on the roster. So we'll try to get you the names here. But they do pick up a first down, does Ewing. It's their first of the game. First and 10 from the 49. I think that was uh, Jeffrard Oswaldo, the junior running back. This time they flip it to Cordell Sloan, who's brought down in plus territory now out to the 43-yard line. It's going to bring up second down and short. I should say that last run, the previous run was by junior Jeffrard Oswaldo. Number 10, as I think Ewing has brought some of their backups into this one. It's Jeffrard Oswaldo in the backfield here again, along with Ryan Gregg. 
Takes the snap, looking to throw. Got a man wide open. That's Sam Simpkins. A lot of room. He's got a first down out to the 31 as he's brought down there by Mike Whitlock, the sophomore, and that'll bring up a first down for Ewing as they're now having a little bit of offensive success, really, for the first time in this game. First and 10 from the 31. Now ball placed on the left hash. Greg in the shotgun with Jeff Rard as Waldo behind him. He'll put a man in motion and flip it to him. That's, Desha that's Deshaun Jones who is able to run it out to the 30-yard line before being tackled by a trio of Bulldogs, and that'll bring up second down and nine. Jones. I'll say he got back to the line of scrimmage. It's actually going to make it second down and 10 as the clock ticks down to 8.45 to play in this one. And you know, Gus, if Ewing's able to go down here and at least get some points up on the board, got to feel like maybe they could take some of that momentum into their next game. This pass here on the left side is caught by Rashawn Williams, who's got a first down into the red zone. Yeah, and that, at this point, that's all you can ask for is trying to get some momentum going into the next game. Ball will come out now to the 17. First time Ewing is in the red zone in this game. So it looked like there was a Hopewell Valley player kind of slow to get up, but First making his 10. way back 17. it towards the field to play now. Going to stay in this game. As it looks like Hopewell Valley is kind of playing off these Ewing receivers. They've been able to get... Uh, some separation here on some of these quick passes. This time they're going to hand it off up the middle as Jeffrard as Waldo breaks one tackle and is able to get out across the first down marker before being brought down at the five. And so it's going to be first and goal now for Ewing as they threaten to put some points on the board for the first time in this game. And there is a player down now for Ewing, slow to get up. And it looks like the trainers are going to come out. So we're going to take a quick break and be right back with more high school football action here on the WBCB Sports Network. This is Merrill Reese reminding you that Haldeman Ford Subaru on Route 33 in Hamilton Township is more than just a great place to purchase a new Ford Subaru or pre-owned car or truck. Their collision and service centers services all makes and models and specializes in fleet service. Haldeman's Collision Center is renowned for their work. It's a state-of-the-art facility, all insurance accepted. Accepted, free estimates and loaner cars available, and one of the friendliest staffs around. From small dents to major repairs on any maker model, it's Haldeman Ford Subaru Collision Center, Route 33 in Hamilton Township. They're good! Capital Health's primary care network continues to grow, bringing its extensive option of locations to your neighborhood. Whether you're scheduling a wellness checkup or not feeling well, advanced medicine starts with a Capital Health primary care doctor at locations near you in Mercer, Bucks, and Burlington counties. To find a Capital Health primary care location that's convenient for you, visit capitalmedicalgroup.org. That's capitalmedicalgroup.org. There really is nothing like a home team advantage. That's why Team Toyota is the choice for your next vehicle purchase or service this season, with new Toyota models available for immediate delivery and over 100 certified used and pre-owned vehicles for any budget, plus service specials to keep you on the road to victory. Shop or schedule online at teamtoyota.net or choose one of our three locations in Langhorne, Glen Mills, or Princeton. Are you part of the team? We welcome you back here to Ewing High School. 7-18 to play in this game, and it's 42-0 Hopewell Valley. As the Blue, Devil, Blue Devils are threatening here. They've got it as... At a first and goal from the five, injured players still down, so definitely not what you want to see. And so while we have a minute, I'd like to remind you to not forget, if you miss any of today's action, you can read all about it in tomorrow's edition of The Trentonian for your complete local and national news seven days a week. It's The Trentonian or online at trentonian.com. 
the only newspaper serving Bucks, Burlington, and Mercer County seven days a week. It's the Trentonian. So the player that was down is now up and walking very gingerly off the field, but under his own power, which is good. As Ewing's offense comes back out there, first and goal, looking to get on the board for the first time in this game and looking to get on the board for the first time since their opening game against South Hunterdon. First and goal, they're going to hand this one off to Jeffers Oswaldo, and he's wrapped up right around the line of scrimmage. As he actually did end up falling forward, but after the refs blew the play dead. So it's going to make it second down and goal. Stop for no gain, take it down. We are still waiting for someone to claim the prize. Again, the ticket number is 1768. Six, two. Second down and goal. Greg in the shotgun, puts a man in motion. They're going to flip it to him. That's Deshaun Jones. He's running forward, and he's in for a touchdown. Deshaun Jones is able to put Ewing on the board for the first time in this game and for the first time since week zero, as that makes it a 42-6 to six ball game. So now maybe, that Gus, that's something that Ewing can build on going into next week because obviously not enough time to come back in this one, but they are able to get on the board and have a pretty good sustained drive right there. Got to be feeling pretty good about themselves right there. Yeah, definitely got to feel good about themselves. And overall, as an offensive drive, it looked really well. Had a couple passing plays that looked good, a couple running plays that looked good. And just overall, just a, a solid offensive drive and hopefully one that can carry them into next game. Well, Coach Madelon going to decide to go for two here, so Greg going to roll to his right, look for the end zone, and that pass is caught That's right there by Evan Nixon. Evan Nixon. And so that makes it 42-8, to eight. so they decide to go for two. It works out, and maybe some more stuff to feel good about on the offense there for Ewing. As the clock does continue to run, of course, with the running clock, it's more than a 33-point lead still. Still a 34-point lead, so clock down to 5.08 to play in this game. But Ewing's on the board, and they've got some momentum now, and we'll see if maybe they can get a defensive stop, because that's something they haven't been able to do since the first quarter. Gus, how come you're not dancing the, to the band here? You were doing it at halftime. Uh, I, I don't like this song as much. Uh, I like the one at halftime. This one doesn't get me uh, moving my hips as much, you know? They got to bring Batman back out. We should have Gus Cam, just camera that sits would, behind you that people would watches not, you the full game. People would not want to watch the game. They would just be watching Gus Cam. We could do like a side-by-side. -side. Oh, jeez. You're interested in participating in a great organization some free time unified soccer is the right choice for you please see coach stock for more information so jose Ovel ayala out there to kick this ball away again we've got that running clock so it continues to move now under four minutes to go in the game and Ovel ayala runs up and it's a short kick out to the 42, and it's fallen on right there by Kyle Yadamik. And so that is where Hopewell will start this drive, and we'll see if they bring out their second unit. And I believe that's what they're going to do. As Milan Desai and the rest of the first string players for this Hopewell Valley offense. Looks like their day is going to be done. Very effective offense that they ran really throughout the entire game. First and, ten. and it will be Grayson Vlasic, who's got a little bit of a different look as, than Milan Desai. Vlasic, just 5'6", 145, as opposed to Desai's 6'200 pound frame. The Vlasic out there, he takes a snap, hands this one off to Gavin Siebold, and he runs it up the middle out to the 47. It's going to be a gain of six.
Vlasic in the shotgun. He's got Seabold to his left again. They're going to give it to him again. Same play design. Runs it up the middle and kind of runs into a wall. And the ball comes out there. The Ewing thinks they've got it. Will await the signal. And Ewing does have it. So the first fumble there of the game for Hopewell Valley is lost by them. And now the Blue Devils are going to get their offense right back out there on the field after going down and scoring a touchdown on their last drive. Yeah, but if they're going to want to try to score, they're going to have to try to do it quick as we're just under two minutes with the running clock. Looks like Coach Madeline will bring the starters back out there as Ryan Gregg, the quarterback, leads his troops back out. Yeah, down to just a minute 43 to go in this one. Ball placed on the 49 of Hopewell Valley. Let's hear it again for that Blue Devil marching band. And so Ewing will come to the line now, maybe looking to go down and score one more time before this game ends. First and 10. As they trail this one 42-8. Greg takes a snap, has some time, looking deep, has a man that's Nijay Manning, and he drops it in the bucket, down to the 10 to the 5, and it's a touchdown. How about that? Now touchdowns on back-to-back -back plays by the Blue Devils, and here's some things that maybe they could take into next week, as that was a perfectly thrown ball by Ryan Gregg. Yeah, that was their best play yet on the day, an absolute dime by the quarterback, dropping back, giving it a second, letting his receiver get wide open, and man, that was beautiful. So it's 42 to 14 now, and we'll see if Coach Madelon decides to send the offense back out there, go for two again. It looks like that's what they're going to do. So they now scored touchdowns on back-to-back -back possessions, back-to-back -back plays. And so Ryan Gregg will come back out and look to make this a 42 to 16 ball game. The clock now stops because it's under 34, 49 seconds to play. Greg in the shotgun, puts a man in motion. Going to hand this one off to Jeffrard Oswaldo, and he finds his way into the end zone. So they're now two for two on two-point tries, and it's 42 to 16. Hopewell, 42, Blue Devils, 16. So definitely a much better fourth quarter here for Ewing as opposed to the rest of the game on both sides of the ball. And so that's got to feel good for them. Obviously, they got shut out last week, and now their offense has been able to do something on back-to-back -back drives. So they've got to feel like maybe they've got a little momentum. And so teeing it up now at the 40 is Jose Ovel Ayala. Back deep, back deep to receive is Kevin Petrillo. Although we haven't really seen either team boot it deep that much this game. They will do it here, though. And taking a knee there at the 18 or the 13-yard line, excuse me. As the clock does continue to move now and... All Hopewell's got to do is really take one knee, and that will do it for the game. They might not even have to do that as the clock's down to 30 seconds. And it looks like Hopewell's offense is coming off the field. Clock down to 20 seconds, and I think that's going to put an end to this 42-16 to win for Hopewell Valley. They're going to improve to 2-0 and as they win this Capital Division matchup. Ewing will fall to one and two. Obviously this game was pretty much all Hopewell Valley throughout. Any last thoughts on this game there, Gus? Just a fantastic game overall for Hopewell Valley. Offensively, defensively, overall just a great game. And Ewing, it didn't look great at first, but towards the end they got some things that looked positive that they could take into their next game. So. Very interesting to see how this season goes ahead for Ewing and very excited to see how Hopewell Valley goes ahead. Well, one more time for the entire crew, and we thank you guys all for listening. Gus Barber on camera and color, 
Aaron Bennett, our video engineer and our intern today, Andrew Coates, I'm Jordan Hirsch saying so long from Ewing. Have a great rest of your afternoon, everybody.